Hey guys, so today um, we're going to be looking at a monitor that I just brought home from Craigslist. Um, I really didn't know anything about it when I picked it up and I still don't know anything about it now that it's here. <laughs> it is a uh, old NEC monitor from uh, the late 80s. The model number is the CT 2620A. It is a 26 inch viewable uh, CRT. So it's pretty freaking big. You can see it in comparison to a 13 inch and a 14 inch. It's huge. And then, you know, here's a 20 inch. Um, but basically, these old, these old NEC monitors um, really are not documented. They're kind of lost to time. Um, NEC really didn't digitize any of their um, previous product lineup from the 80s and the 90s, early, late 80s, early 90s for CRTs. So really the only info you can find is stuff that people have either posted themselves or um, stuff from like old uh, AV magazines that have, you know, ads for the various TVs that may like list some of the specs. So I have no idea what TVL this is. I have no idea what the deflection angle is. Um, I don't know anything about it other than it's NEC and that it's a consumer, uh, it's part of their consumer series, their CT, which stands for uh, color television. So one of my buddies uh, is pretty sure that he's had a very similar TV to this in the past that actually had um, RGB input. So I'm pretty curious when I open this thing up what I'm going to find as far as input capabilities because I don't have a service manual. I don't know what it looks like inside at all. I don't know what jungle chip it uses. But on the back, the only inputs it has are composite. So if if it's not capable of anything beyond composite, then this thing is is not worth anything. Like it's not worth anyone having. Um, I'll probably just take the tube out and see if any arcade collector wants it for their arcade cabinet. And then I will part out the boards and save all the transistors and ICs and, and whatnot that are reusable because NEC components are uh, widely used in pretty much any consumer professional monitor from the 90s. Um, including pretty much everything Sony ever released. So those are definitely valuable to have and, and they're originals, you know, too, which when you go on eBay, half the time the, sh the shit that they have on sale there is, is counterfeit. So, um, or it was pulled from a broken TV and the component doesn't work. So at least this way I know everything that I'm pulling out is good and I know where it came from. So I'm going to turn this thing on. Spoiler alert, I've already turned it on before I started recording and it looked like hot garbage uh, because it's composite only and it's a 27 inch or a 26 inch tube. So that's like a huge picture for um, the low resolution of composite. Uh, I'm gonna switch the light off and uh, change the exposure on my camera so you can see the color and everything. Okay, so this is what we're dealing with. Um, Oh, I'm almost out of time on this, but um, let's go to the next race or restart this race and I'm going to show you not only, you know, everyone knows composite's not the best video signal or anything, but the uh, quality of the components in a TV, especially the comb filter, really are what determines how good composite actually looks. Um, this Sanyo monitor I have up here has a very, very good uh, comb filter and composite video on that actually looks pretty fantastic. Um, however, on this TV, I don't know if it's due to some bad capacitors or, or if it really just has a totally ass comb filter, but composite looks terrible. Um, I'm gonna zoom in on the side of the car here and you can see how much color fringing there is. Whoops, hold on. It's just a blurry mess on the edges of everything. It's it's somehow blocky and blurry at the same time. Like there's these this weird like um, 
like square pattern through all the edges but it's a blurry square so it just looks fucking terrible and then the colors are really washed out um, I played with the controls on the front and you know composite doesn't have great color uh, accuracy because it's a low bandwidth video signal but this is pretty bad even for composite like I, what you're seeing on the camera looks a little bit more orange than what I'm seeing but otherwise the what you're seeing is pretty close it's it's bad um, so yeah I'm going to open this thing up I'm gonna take the rear case off I'm gonna take pictures of as much as I can and try to document some interesting stuff about it for my website just because I don't want this monitor to be completely um, uh, a mystery to anyone who sees it out in the wild um, it's always good when you Google a model number and it actually shows up with a result that you know is what you're looking for so I'm gonna document it I'm gonna see if I can do any noteworthy mods to it either s video or um, even RGB potentially but I, I doubt that it's gonna be RGB capable it has a all of the controls on the front are um, analog or well actually they're digital controls but the display the way that they display are, is analog there's no um, on-screen display or anything let me show you on the top here it has um, let me turn the slide on it has these uh, up and down controls this set is for volume and when I press that you don't get any feedback but it does change the volume it has channel up and down because there's a tuner and when I hit channel up and down I do get this blue overlay on the screen um, and I don't know if that's the jungle chip doing that, doing that like if this thing has like actual OSD lines or if that's some kind of like stuff <sighs> built into the tuner somehow I like I have no idea what that where that comes from so we'll check that out um, it's got some controls down here it's got V hold sharpness black level which is NEC's um, name for brightness picture uh, which is basically contrast color which only affects composite tint which again is only for composite and then it's got treble bass and balance adjustments for the internal speakers which are actually pretty good like I turned the bass up all the way and I could hear it you know it's not bad and then it has s wide which I click that and it doesn't do anything except toggle on a a light up here like if I press it right now see s wide comes on and off but there's no change to the picture so I don't know if that only affects the tuner input or if that is just a non-functioning like maybe a capacitor is dead or something um, then it has auto color which tries to do some color correction let me turn off the flashlight it does actually work somewhat like you can see that it, that it does change things here like if you look at the sky the sky gets more blue with with auto color turned on it actually does a decent job but it's, it's not enough and then uh, whoops I just changed the input aux that's weird I can toggle on an aux input and I hear it really clicking you see how that picture flashes? I wonder if it has some kind of overlay feature. That would be interesting. Yeah, so let's get this thing open. Figure out if it's even worth working on or if we're just gonna rip it apart. Okay, so the back cover's off and I can already tell this thing is garbage. Like it's just not it's made as cheaply as as possible it's just a cheapo consumer set um, it's a single board for everything you can see here deflection video processing is all on the same board and then this was the power and uh, external uh, speaker amplifier board here it's got shitty little speakers on the front and then it's got a control board up there with a big horn, a big fat harness for all those uh, wires. And then most importantly is, you'll see here, 
written vertically 26 v 110 that means it's a 26 inch uh, tube and it's 110 degree deflection and uh, I could already tell just by looking at how shallow this tube was that it was over 90 degrees um, yeah 110 degrees is garbage you don't want that um, if anyone's curious the tube is A66 ABU 35X SF59 WNA made by NEC. Interestingly, made in the US. I didn't know NEC made tubes in the US. But yeah, I mean, the nicest compliment I can give this entire pile of garbage is that they used Rubicon caps. That's about the only good thing I can say about it. <laughs> um, so let's, you know, let's commit and finish what we started here. Pull this board out a little bit farther and figure out what the, uh, what the jungle chip looks like and see if we can find it online. Okay, so I got this board pulled out a little bit so we can actually see some stuff and right off the bat, I laughed because I saw this chip right here, this this one right here, the NEC uh, UPC 1377C. That is a uh, deflection slash uh, sink separator chip that uh, Sony uses in pretty much every professional monitor that I've ever looked at from them. The, the uh, Q series, like the Sony PVM 2030, the 1344Q, all the way up to the 14 uh, MTU or like the M series of PVMs, I've th used that chip. Um, I don't know if the L series or newer still uses them, but it's still here. And then right here we've got a UPC 1382C, which I don't recognize offhand. Um, and then right there, oh man, I can't read that. I'm trying to cheat with the phone because I don't want to stick my head in there quite yet. D1706C. I don't recognize that. I think that the jungle is here. It's this one, possibly, but it's not branded. HA11480. Um, so I'll look that up. But um, if anything, you know, here's the... Here's the uh, horizontal, oh, sorry, I'm struggling to get the camera on it. This heat sink right here is a horizontal output transistor. You know, that's definitely something to save. Um, this thing is, is definitely a mini gold mine as far as old, authentic uh, NEC parts. But man, if, if this thing can't accept S-Video or even better RGB, um, it's total garbage, this tube, and I have a feeling this tube is really low TVL. It may just look garbage even with RGB, to be honest. Um, but I just want to, I'm just, my curiosity is getting the best of me here, so I, I want to know. Okay, so I was right that that chip over there is the uh, analog processing, uh, video processing, which is aka the jungle. Um, it's a Hitachi chip, and I looked it up, and literally all I could find was a two-page data sheet entirely in Japanese. And I read it through one of those websites that you can translate an image that, um, you know, using OCR, and uh, it had no pinout. And it had a block diagram that was so blurry that I had to guess at the words I was reading. But I could tell enough from the block diagram that this does not handle anything except composite. So I think it might be drawing those numbers internally in the chip, or those are somehow getting encoded into the composite video signal um, before it reaches this chip. And so there's really nothing that can be done. This thing can't even accept as video, which is kind of surprising to me honestly I was expecting better but uh, 
yeah, kind of a disappointment, but at least I don't feel guilty about parting it out now because this thing is total fucking garbage. 110 degree deflection tube, probably only a 300 TVL uh, slot mask at 26 inches, which is just terribly low resolution. Um, designed for nothing higher than composite. Uh, I mean, what more can you say? This thing is a piece of shit. So I'm going to take it, uh, take it apart. I'm going to steal all these caps and put them in a bag as uh, last resort caps because they are old and out of spec. But whenever I need to test something, it's always useful to have some caps where I don't care if they're going to blow up. And then, of course, I'm going to pull out all these ICs, which are good, and I'm excited to have them. Uh, and I may pull out these transformers too because those are often hard to find replacements for. <sighs> but other than that, um, yeah, this thing's going in the trash, it's going to the recycler. Um, no one's going to want this tube. This is not a good, good tube for an arcade system at all. You'd be better off finding a JVC D series 110 degree deflection tube than trying to use this piece of shit like it, it's such low resolution there's no no way this would be worth it to anyone so yeah kind of an unfortunate resolution to this video but you know not all of them are winners see you next time